It's time, folks. Spring practice is officially here, and we'll get our first look at the 2023 Fighting Irish football team later today. Stick around to find out which players have the most to prove, which new coaches will make the biggest impact, and why Tyler Buckner could be the star of the spring session. That's coming up next on this edition of Locked On Irish. You are Locked On Irish, your daily podcast on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on and welcome to Locked On Irish. It is Wednesday, March 22nd, and thank you for making this your first listen of the day. As always, you can watch the show on YouTube, and if you are watching along, please like the video below and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to the podcast, please take a moment to rate the show five stars and subscribe there as well. My name is Tyler Wojak, and I am the host. I'm a Notre Dame alum and have been a diehard fan for my entire life. I've been podcasting about the football team since 2020, and I'm also a producer for the college football talent at Fox Sports in L.A. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. In today's episode, I'm going to be joined by my friend Greg Flamung from Irish Sports Daily to preview spring practice and discuss the players we're most excited to see what our expectations are for the new coaching staff. Plus, she shares a bold prediction at the end about the quarterbacks that I think you're going to find really interesting. I went over the top position battles on Monday's episode of this week and then hit the defense on Tuesday's episode, so go check those out if you haven't already. We'll have you covered here throughout spring practice, so stay tuned for that. And look, I know a lot of you are dying to find out who Notre Dame is going to hire as its next men's basketball coach, and trust me, I'm anxious to know who it's going to be as well. Once it happens, we know who it's going to be. I promise we'll be all over that here on the podcast. Okay, let's talk to Greg. All right, I'm joined now by Greg Flamong from Irish Sports Daily. And Greg, it's officially that time of year for us to get excited about video clips from practice and dissect quotes from the coaching staff to try and figure out who's playing well and who's not in spring practice. Are you ready for this? Uh, you know what? I would love video clips. With the access that we get, <laughs> and video clips would be so welcome. Please send as many as possible. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll take what we can get. So... Putting that aside, which players do you think have the most to prove over the next four to five weeks? Um, all right, so we can start on offense. Um, I think one is Lorenzo Styles. I think uh, just given the way last year went and the way the last season ended, I think he he probably feels like he he needs to start off on a better foot. Um, Jamie and I talked about him today on our Hit and Hustle show, um, and he it's his third spring now. He was, he was an early enrollee in 2021. Uh, so we went through spring in 21, 22, and now third, uh, this is his third one. So I think having his third spring and I just think being acclimated and being an upperclassman now, and it doesn't have the pressure of kind of being the number one, like a lot of people thought he would just go out there and play good ball. Um, I think he has, I think this is a big spring for him. I think he's going to do really well. And the other one on offense, I was kind of thinking about is Chris Tyree because I think a lot of people, like, you know, I think Audrick Estime has has his role. I think Logan Diggs has his role. A lot of people are excited about Jadarian Price, you know, to get him back out there and see what he can do. And you just kind of wonder, you know, Chris Tyree, like, what's his role actually going to look like again? Is it going to be the same as last year where he's just kind of a pinch hitter getting seven to eight carries? Is going to be more in the slot? Is he going to be more, you know, is it going to be more wide open when he's out there? And a lot of that has to do with uh, Sam Hartman and whether or not gonna, they're going to be in a little bit more 10 personnel, a little bit wider, uh, spread out the field a little bit more. Um, and I think that's, you know, spreading the field is where he's going to be able to operate the best because he doesn't do uh, so good in traffic, right? He doesn't, you don't want a ton of bodies around him. You want him to be spread out. You want him to have a lot of open space to work. So I think those two guys um, offensively, I think those are the ones that I'm thinking about need to have really good springs. Yeah, I agree with you. And isn't it weird how last year at this exact same time, both Styles and Tyree were coming off maybe both their best games of their career yeah, in yeah. the bowl game in the Fiesta Bowl. Now we fast forward a year later, and now we're looking at them like, where do they even have a role on this that's, offense? That's a really good point. Yeah, it's good. It's point. weird how it plays out. What about on defense? So I was thinking of someone who is kind of a reserve. So uh, I think the Will linebacker spot was obviously a kind of a sore, a sore one for Notre Dame last year. And I think a lot of people are thinking about Maris Leofow, but I'm thinking about Prince Colley. Um, I think that he... A lot of people wanted him to come in and replace Marist um, at the Will linebacker position, and he got a good amount of snaps last year and not a ton of production, right? Especially when it wasn't 
a situation where he was asked to blitz, right? Like if he was given a role, it's like, hey, blitz the A gap or or shoot this uh, run stun or whatever it is. Like he looked good in those positions um, when it was like, hey, not a lot of reading, reacting, that sort of thing. But when it was that, when he had to read and we had to react, there wasn't a lot of production there. And I think that, you know, he it took him a little bit to pick up the defense, which is understandable, right? It was a new defense. Uh, coming from you know a different uh, defensive coordinator and that sort of thing, and it was his first time getting a like real good look on the field, and so you know it, it's not unheard of that a player, a young player like that, wouldn't you know be as instinctive or be as comfortable as you would think. But I think going into this spring, I think you want to see more of that and more of it from a uh, just a base defense, reading, reacting, uh, seeing it, hitting it, and being a playmaker in that spot. I think it's a really big a big spring for him because. There's been a lot of there's been a lot of talent that's brought into the linebacker position. Um, I think Jack Kaiser could play that spot. Drake Bowen is there. Uh, could, could you move uh, Could you move JD Bertrand over there if someone wants to play the mic? Uh, obviously, Maris Leafau is already there. Um, you have uh, Jaden Osbury who could be a will. Like so, there's a lot of influx of talent. Uh, I should mention uh, Nolan Ziegler as well. Also, could be a, a will if if he bulks up. So there's a lot of options there, and you don't want to be in a situation where younger guys are starting to press for time because once those guys get ahead of you, it's really hard to get that back if they're younger. So I think for him, I think this is a really big spring. Yeah, I like your point about Kali, and it's funny because we as fans, it's hard to really understand when a guy who has all the traits, who's athletic as hell when they're not seeing the field because they don't like they don't understand the defense yet and they don't know how to read and react properly it's it's a lot harder to swallow when they're like man i wish they were out there if you know you see someone like jd bertrand or whoever like misses a tackle or they can't get to a spot yeah. but then the coaches who are with them every day in practice where they're you know in the completely wrong spot and give up an open gap and then someone goes it's just like a different thing that we just don't see every day but i'm hopeful that uh Kali is able to step up he's a, he's got a couple years under his belt now so this is a big opportunity for him so we talked about some guys who've been around the team for a little bit we've also got a bunch of newcomers on the team as well that we're going to see for the very first time this spring in a Notre Dame uniform so which early enrollee are you most excited to see uh all right let's go back to offense I mean I think well I I don't know if it's uh a certain one on offense I think the trio of receivers that are on campus right now so Rico Flores uh Jaden Greyhouse and Braylon James like I think one of those guys I think one of those guys is is probably going to stand out more than the others just as a, you know, th- that's just, those are the odds, right? One of them yeah. will stand out. And I'm, I'm curious to see who it is, right? Like Jaden Greyhouse comes from a great program in Texas at Wastelake High School and winning state championships and that sort of thing. And I think coming from a program like that, he's, he's really prepared physically and mentally to come in and be competitive. Um, Rico Flores is, has a, is a really good route running background. He's, he's a, been a really good route runner. And there's, I think there's opportunity for him in the slot. Um, but he had a foot injury as well. So he's coming off of that. Like, where is he at with the foot injury? That's going to be um, kind of an open question. Uh, curious to see how that works out for him. And then Braylon James, right? The the super athlete, right? A, a sprinter, hurdler in high school. Got that long speed that everyone wants. Um, very dynamic player. You know, can he can he forge a role in in that spot? Um, just as a as an early enrollee, right? Because anytime you can get speed out there, right? We've seen it multiple times, right? Chris Brown, uh, Will Fuller was one. He he got out in there as a freshman. Um, so you know, Kevin Stefferson was another guy who just came in. You didn't know where he's going to be, and suddenly he's he's toasting guys in practice. So I think those are those are the guys on offense, and I think defensively, I'm really excited to see um, you know a couple guys again. Drake Bowen is one. I, I just think he's going to be a stud. I think he's going to be a stud in Notre Dame. I, I, it would be very hard for him to get into the lineup as a freshman just because of the people in front of him, tons of experience, uh, tons of production in front of him. That's going to be a tough hole, uh, a tough haul for him. But I just think he's, I think he's really good. I, I, he has the, t- the temperament for it too. Like to me, future captain, three-year starter, I would not be surprised if he was pushing for starter reps next year. Um, so I think he's going to be really exciting, excited to get him on campus. And then Christian Gray, uh, I, I just think there's a there's a role for a, a nickel. And can he win it? You know, can he put himself in a position where, hey, man, I, I can cover guys. I'm, I'm, I'm sticking on people. And we know that this staff, if they see a freshman corner who can stick to people and is is doing well in the coverages and understanding the defense – They'll put him out there, right? They put Jaden Mickey out there. They put Ben Morrison out there. So this staff is not afraid of that. So uh, it, those are the guys that I'm, I'm 
thinking about uh, as we go into it. Yeah, they're certainly not afraid to put Mickey out there. They put him out there in the season opener against Ohio State on an island in a safety blitz, in a blitz. But I want to go back to the receivers real quick. You mentioned mm-hmm. Braylon James is a super yeah. athlete. You're a track guy. You've yeah. seen him run. Is he is he really that special? Like, what do you see from him? It's 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 for me. It's more that so he's a hurdler, right? And 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 another famous hurdler was Ted Ginn. Ted Ginn Jr. who who went to Ohio State. Now this yeah. is obviously in the early aughts, but I saw him play in high school believe it or not, in Cleveland okay. a long time ago. Him and Troy Smith were on the same high school team, and they actually both kind of played quarterback. And I think the two of them combined for like 800, yard, 800 total yards because they also returned kicks and punts, and it was crazy to see. So I'm, I'm familiar with Ted Ginn. Yeah, so that's that's long speed, body control as well. I mean, when, when, you, when you're sprinting like that, and he's a bigger guy. It's not like he's short, right? So you're a bigger guy sprinting full speed like that, getting the legs going, and then being able to jump over the hurdles, right? Like that's difficult, right? You're sprinting and you're jumping over a barrier, right? That's very difficult. So uh, there's a body control element to that. So I think that's real. I, I think I definitely do. I, I think there's a speed element to him that is a little bit different than um, pretty much everybody else. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what I think about Braylon James. Yeah, I, I think it might be some time before we see him on the field on a consistent basis, whereas Great right. House, like looking at the receivers, I kind of look at it as what does Notre Dame need the most? Like, Braylon James is probably going to be behind Tobias Merriweather in terms of like athletic ability, someone who you throw the deep ball to. Merriweather's yeah. been around for a year. He's a little bit more polished and developed by now. But I feel like Notre Dame was, is going to miss that possession guy that they can go to on a consistent basis without Michael Mayer. And I think that's actually where Jaden Greathouse might fit in. He's really good at contested catches. He's big. He's physical. And even though he's technically should still be in, a senior in high school at this point in time, I'm really high on him going into this year. Now, you mentioned Drake Bowen. If he, if Drake Bowen is able to compete in like just for rotational reps at linebacker this year, given the people that are in front of him, that might be more impressive than any other early enrollee, even if he doesn't really see the field much, just cracking the rotation alone, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and look, the 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 play I'm making there is just special. Like a special athlete, right? Like I some guys are just uh depth chart. What's in front of them just kind of doesn't matter, right? I mean, Manti, he came in as a freshman and he, it was just like, okay, we got to find something for him to do, like right away in the opener. Like he has to do something. And I don't know if he's going to be Manti Teo, uh, but at the same time, That'd be like, nice. it would be great, you know? <laughs> and look, they, I, I think, I think he's similar to, to Manti. I think he's similar to, um, I said Tavon Coney. And I think he's a better athlete than Tavon Coney for sure. But I just think there's a nose for the ball knows how to play the game, knows how to come off the edge. He knows how to do multiple things. And I think he understands the game really well. When you're coming from that, you have that in your background. When you understand the sport and how to play the sport and and where to be and, and you know have the instincts like that, I mean, that just lends itself to getting on the field um, really quickly. We'll be right back with Greg Flamung in a moment, but I want to take this opportunity to tell you about FanDuel. The tournament is heating up, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 since bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to points scored and threes made. I'll do a same game parlay tonight. Give me 76ers money line against the Bulls, plus the over on Joel Embiid's points and rebounds. Joel clearly wants the MVP this season, and he just looks unstoppable right now. FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay like the one I just mentioned. So don't miss a chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. We're also going to see some new coaches on the field for the first time, plus a guy like Jared Parker, who's in a much more prominent role as a new offensive coordinator. So which new coach, and I'm including Parker in this, yeah. what do you think will have the biggest impact early on? So first blush, I, I was going to say Parker, right? He's the new uh, he's the new offensive coordinator. That's a big deal, right? You're, you're a new offensive coordinator. He, he has He's done it before, but he doesn't have a ton of experience there, so you're not really sure what you're getting. Uh, but I think my answer is Joe Rudolph. I, I Because of what he has to do in terms of replacing two guards, right? There, there's, there's open guard spot. There's an open guard competition and in the offensive line at Notre Dame, it's basically the whole thing, right? It's if the offensive line is really good, Notre Dame's going to be really good. If the offensive line is, is a little bit lacking there, as we saw in the early part of 2021, then things can look really lost. Right. And so I think 
being a new coach, doesn't have a tie to really anyone on the staff. Like he knows Marcus Freeman a little bit, but they haven't really coached together. Like he knows him, but they haven't coached together. And and he hasn't coached at Notre Dame. And I think that, you know, with Harry Heastand, you know, obviously he had been at Notre Dame for a really long time. Uh, Jeff Quinn knew Brian Kelly, right? Those two had coached together for a really long time. And then Harry Heastand comes back. Obviously was very familiar with the, with the university. Joe Rudolph has none of that stuff. Right. So he's the one to me where it's like he's going to have the biggest impact on the spring. I think he's going to have probably the biggest impact on the season in just terms of a single coach, because the offensive line needs to needs to really be clicking this year. Yeah, absolutely. And if you think back to that 2021 season, it's kind of a miracle they went 11 and one. Like yeah. Given how bad that offensive line was for a large chunk of the season, it's it's pretty pretty crazy that Notre Dame only lost one game that season, at least during the regular season. So I'm glad you bring up the guards because this week I've talked a lot about the position battles on the offense and the defense and how that will have a big impact on the team going forward. And I think the competition for the two open spots on the offensive line will be a battle, probably more so than any other position on the field. Which position battle do you think will be the most competitive in the spring? I think you nailed it. I think it's guard, and I think it's it's the most important one because every other position battle we're talking about, right? Like, there's going to be a pretty fierce competition for uh, for snaps at receiver, right? But if you're good, you're all going to get out there, right? They're all going to play, right? And the same is true for linebacker. The same is true for the secondary, uh, you know, wherever, right? Running back, right? If you know, if Chris Tyree looks good, he's going to get out there. It doesn't really matter what Estime and Diggs does, right? Yeah. If you look good at any position, you're going to get out there. That's not necessarily true of the offensive line, right? They want the same five the whole season. They, they would totally. love if, if all five guys got all the snaps that they wanted them to have right now, if, if there's a blowout or whatever, you bring in backups, but in competitive games, they want the same five all the time. And so those are the two positions that it's like, we're fighting for those spots. There's, you know, there's Andrew Kostovic, who's, who's going to be a senior. Um, I think he has one more year of eligibility. And then there's, you know, a bunch of young guys, right? There's uh, uh, Billy Shrouth, who's a redshirt freshman. There's Ashton Craig, who's a redshirt freshman. There's uh, Pat Coogan, who's a redshirt freshman, right? And then there's guys like Michael Carmody and uh, uh, Ty Chan and Caleb Johnson. Right. And w- what are they going to do? Right. Rocco Spindler. Right. These are uh, these are all kind of younger guys who it's like if you win this spot, that's going to be your spot theoretically for a few years, you know. And so th- those that competition is going to be very fierce. I think it's going to be uh, hotly contested with that. A number of players could win. Um, I think a lot of people really like Billy Shrouth. I think a lot of people really like Andrew Kostovic, Andrew Kostovic because of his previous experience in Shrouth, because Look, man, p- people have been – the buzz is out there on Billy Strouth. It just is, right? Like, I think a lot of people are excited about him. Uh, people are excited about him when he when he uh, signed with Notre Dame. So, um, we'll see. But that's the one you're going to want to pay attention to. Like, who's taking reps with what, you know, with what unit. Uh, I think, you know, when with the, the media doesn't get a lot of viewings this year, right? There's going to be one full practice – uh, and there's going to be, I think, three five-minute periods where the media gets to watch other than the spring game itself. And and you don't really know about the spring game because they could switch up the teams and the units to where it's like we don't actually know who's starting, right? They've done that in the past. But I think where there's some utility in getting the first five periods is usually the, the line lines up and does something together. And you're going to get a pretty good idea of like, hey, if you're out there with – with Alt, uh, Carell, and Fisher, then that's indicative of who they think is with the first unit. So that's going to be interesting to track all, all, all spring. Yep, I agree. Uh, for all the things that you mentioned, especially the point about how Notre Dame wants to have that line finalized probably – at least early on into fall camp. It's not like receiver or second day. We're like, all right, if you kind of come on by October, you'll start getting more reps and then could play your way onto the field a lot more like Lorenzo Styles did in 2021, where he wasn't a part of the rotation at all, really, at the beginning. And then by the end of the year, he's a starter. You don't really want that on the offensive line. So who do you think will right. win out uh, amongst those guards? I think Kristoffic will win one, um, if I had to guess. Just because uh, he's who else has starting yeah. experience? He's the safest I mean, bet for sure. He's the safest bet. He has starting experience. He's been in the program the longest, so physically his body should be where you want it to be. Um, that's one open kind of the kind of open question with Billy Shrouth. Like, is his body there yet? Um, so I think he's going to win one. And on the other side, I mean, 
if I had to guess, you know, I would say Billy Strouth just because of the juice that that's been swirling around him pretty much since last year, since he arrived last year, right? People are very excited about him. Um, I wouldn't count out Ashton Craig. I wouldn't count out Pat Coogan. We've heard a lot of good things about those guys as well. And I think the staff is very high on them. If, if I had to guess, I would say that Craig and or Coogan was going to be groomed behind Christophic. That's yeah. because of the, the size factor. I, I, I think, I think the staff would prefer them to get another year in the weight room, get bigger, get stronger. And I think just kind of match where Christophic is now. But we'll see. You know, look, if the light was ever going to come on for someone like Rocco Spindler, I mean, he's another one where I could have said, hey, you know, this is a huge spring for you, man. You, the, you, There's an open spot. You don't want it to be taken by someone younger than you. So let, let's see. Let's see what happens. Yeah, if Spindler can't seize it now, I don't really know when or if it's he tough. will. Yeah, so I, I, I liked your point about Strath. Honestly, at this point, considering we haven't really seen him much, but the hype around him, it kind of reminds me of like early days Quentin Nelson where you it heard does. about it. And it uh, if it plays out that way, that, that'd certainly be nice for Notre Dame. Now, you're a former defensive back, so I'm interested to, to hear uh, how you feel about that unit as a whole. I feel like the starting cornerback tandem might be the best Notre Dame has had in a long time with Ben Morrison and Cam Hart once Hart is healthy. But personally, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit concerned about the safety position. I know you really like Xavier Watts, but how do you feel about the back end of the defense heading into spring? I uh, love the corners. This might be the best corner group that Notre Dame's had in, in a really long time, a really long time. I mean, I, I hesitate to say, like, ever because – I'm probably forgetting some guys or, you know, discounting. I mean, in recent memory, right? I mean, I think it's like top end. I think I think Ben Morrison and Cam Hart are two NFL players. I think Ben Morrison is a potential first round NFL pick, which hasn't happened since I think Tom Carter. Wow. Uh, you know, <laughs> Bobby Bobby time. Taylor, Bobby Taylor was a second round pick. Um, Tom Carter was a first round pick. Jeff Burris was a first round. So I guess Jeff Burris in 94. Uh, he, he went at corner. So, I mean, we're talking like mid mid nineties that we're talking about last time Notre Dame had a first round pick at corner. Um, so it, it's just like, I think, I think those guys have, have that potential. Um, I, someone I'm, I, I think is lurking is, is chance Tucker. I think there's something there. I think that he has a chance to forge a role in the secondary. Um, it's not a name that people, I think if, if people saw him enter the portal, I think people would not be surprised by that. But I think, I think there's something there with him. I think he's long. I think he's tall. I think he can run. He has a track background. He was a he was a COVID guy in California, right? So didn't play didn't play fall football in, in uh, 2020, and and but, you know four game spring or whatever, and it just didn't really work out for him. I think there was a development piece that got missed with him. And so I think he's going to be a late bloomer. I, I think there's something there. So if, if you're thinking about someone to watch in the secondary, I think, I think Chance Tucker is that guy. That's really interesting. Uh, Clarence Lewis is another wild card in that group. He mm -hmm. started six games as a true freshman in 2020 and everyone, went, everyone was really high on him at the time. He was getting Kavari Russell comparisons, but he hasn't really taken that leap that a lot of us were hoping for. And now he's been passed up by sophomores like Ben Morrison and even Jaden Mickey, really. And I'm not really sure where he fits in anymore. Is he going to be a reserve corner? Is he a nickel? Could they even move him to safety? How do you think Notre Dame should utilize him this year? Uh, I think this as a swing player, I think that's a good role for him. And I think he had a bit, a bit of a bounce back last year, similar to similar to Tariq Bracey in 21 that what a post you know the 2020 season when they had to they had to pull him from the lineup for Clarence Lewis right like he Tariq Bracey just got lost had to, had to get him out of there in 2021 he had he had a better year and then 2022 he had, he even built on that and i think that's possible for Clarence Lewis um I, I think i think last year was a bounce back year for him he wasn't great but he wasn't awful either you know he he did some solid things he had he had a really good game against Ohio State uh, i thought he had a really good game against Cal Right. So he had some good moments there. Um, and I and I think that as a as a as a as a possible nickel, as a possible, you know, replacement at, at, at the field or at the boundary. You know, there are some matchups that I don't like for him. Right. If he's on the boundary, if you want him in press, I don't like that. Right. That he's not that kind of athlete. He's not as comfortable turning and running like someone like Ben Morrison is. But if you can get him in off coverage, you can get him in the right matchup. I, I like him over there. And look at, at I. You know, people talk about him at safety. I don't hate it, right? I think there's, I think there's something there. I, I, it's one of those things where I don't, I don't like him as a full time guy because I don't think he has the suddenness. I don't think he has the urgency as a safety. 
Um, but for someone who it's like, Hey, if, if Clarence Lewis is in the game, I'm not freaking out. Right. I'm not thinking, right. oh, I don't know about this. Right. Where I think that, you know, that there were times where, that with Jaden Mickey last year against USC where it's like that, that scares me a little bit. You know, when you, when you feel really uncomfortable, I don't yeah, really feel bit. like that with Clarence Lewis. <laughs> 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 trying to be fair, trying to be fair, but I, 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 but I, I don't think that's the case with Clarence Lewis. I, I think if they put him out there, they can expect good play from him. Not superstar play, but good play. Yeah, and I think Tariq Bracey should give us all hope that someone can really blossom late in their career. And especially Lewis, like he's stuck around. He could leave, or he could have left already by now. I think the fact that he's going back for spring practice shows that he's going to be around for this season. All right, on the way out here, give me a bold prediction that we can revisit after spring ball, and then we can decide if you're a genius or not. Bold prediction. Tyler Buckner is going to have a huge spring. That's my bold prediction. Oh, I, I think I that like he that. is I think he is going to be freed up by Sam Hartman being on the roster. I think for him, it's like, hey, I'm not trying to win a job. I'm not trying to. It's not my first uh, spring since I haven't played football since my junior year of high school. I'm not trying to win a job. I'm not trying to look any certain kind of way. I'm just going to go play ball. I'm going to go make plays. I think that's his style of play. I think he needs to be a playmaker. Don't worry about making mistakes because you have someone ahead of you, right? Test the limits. Test your ability. Uh, I think he's. I think he's got great ability. I think he was brought in to be a certain kind of player. And I think with Sam Hartman there, I think he's going to play free, and he's going to look good. I, I think he's going to be the talk of the spring. I really do. I like that. Do you think he'll be good enough to sort of force his way onto the field in some capacity? I, th- I think that. I think that's the talk, right? And I don't think he's going to supplant Sam Hartman, right? But in my opinion, if you look really good with his skill set at quarterback. They're going to find a way. They're going to find a way. I don't know how it'll work. It's not my job to figure out how to work, but they're going to look at him and they're going to say, hey, he's one of our best 11. We need to get him out there in some form or fashion. I agree. That's why they pay the coaches a lot of money. All right. He is Greg Flamung. You can find him on Twitter at Greg2126, and you can check out his podcast, Hit and Hustle, that he does for Irish Sports Daily. It's one of my favorites, so be sure to check out Greg's work. Uh, thanks for coming on the new show, man. This has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. It. Congratulations. I'm very happy for you. That's going to do it for me today. Thanks again to Greg, and thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Remember to subscribe to the show on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Like the video, rate the show, you know the deal, and give us a follow on Twitter, at Lockdown Irish, on Instagram, at Lockdown Irish Pod, and my personal Twitter account, at Tyler Wojak. That's at Tyler, W-O-J-C-I-A-K. For your second listen, check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court. Plus, hear from big name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape. That's Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. I'll see you guys tomorrow.